We are in the final part of software requirement engineering, solution-oriented requirements. The final part is part 4, in which we will be focusing on functionality perspective of solution-oriented requirements. Do you still remember the other perspectives of solution-oriented requirements? Yes, they are data and behavioral. Functional modeling is focusing on the activities. To create a data flow diagram, first define the scope of the system. Then define criteria to decompose the scope. And finally, model the components into a DFD. There are several structure analysis to help us in defining the data flow diagram. The techniques are context delineation, event-based partitioning, jigsaw puzzle, and pursuit of data. We must first visit context delineation because it is the foundation of other techniques. It helps us to break down the top-level system objectives to refine objectives and eventually the components that we need for data flow diagram. To come up with a model for DFD, you can use event-based partitioning, jigsaw puzzle, or pursuit of data. This lecture will be focusing on event-based partitioning. Event-based partitioning, partitioning is based on triggers from the context and model the processes that produce responses to the triggers. The other two techniques that are worth mentioning in this lecture will be jigsaw puzzle and pursuit of data. Jigsaw puzzle requires us to come up with fragments of data flow and then figure out how these fragments could be linked together. In the pursuit of data, we will trace input data to output data and then by tracing, we will be figuring out the transformations in between the input and the output. Context delineation requires us to come up with a context diagram. Look at the figure. This figure is the context diagram of ordering system. The ordering system is a system to be analyzed and to be eventually developed. The system context will be customer, kitchen, and manager. Customer, kitchen, manager are sources and sinks to the system. Having identified the sources and sinks, we identify the input outputs. From customer, we have inputs of order. The order system will send the meal order to the kitchen, and then the kitchen will prepare the meals. Of course, the meals will not be shown here because meals are physical objects that are not to be captured by the ordering system. And finally, the ordering system uh, will generate the sales report as well as receive to manager and customer respectively. Now, this will be the ingredients that we can use to come up with a DFD that occurs within, within the ordering system. We are still in context delineation. This is another context diagram, also known as DFD level zero. In this context diagram of DFD level zero, we have external data store. The system context will be employee human resources, staff counsel, and payroll. They are the sources and sinks which provide the input and receive the outputs from the system. The inputs, personal information from employee, hiring guidelines from human resources, and open positions from data store. The outputs would be who is the person to be hired to the human resources, disability information to the staff council, and benefit packages 
to be recorded a payroll. Just bear in mind, in data flow diagram, we'll be focusing on data, not a sequence of dialogues between the system contacts and the contact and the system. This is a dialogue. No, we don't want this. We want net data that occurs between the system contacts and the system. To come up with data flow diagram, DFD, using event-based function technique, the first step is to identify relevant events. This is the distinct uh, criterion for DFD technique using event-based functioning. It identifies the relevant events that processes the inputs into outputs. By examples, in the scenario, and model them, and then compare the uh, events, integrate where necessary, decompose where necessary, in order to come up with the hierarchy of the models. Finally, check what is incomplete in order to complete the model. Now, in event-based partitioning, as I have emphasized earlier, the technique focuses on relevant events instead of data flow. Event can be external event, which is triggered by a context, somebody, another system, or a temporal event, which is triggered by timer, calendar. You need to list down the events by asking who does what and when. Some examples of events are sensors provide measurements, user initializes or updates thresholds, user requests detailed information on sensor, user analyzes an alert, time for critical report of compressed data, this is temporal, time for periodical daily or shift protocol. So these are events. For each of the event, trace the flow until it reaches a data store or it generates an output that will be sent to the contacts. Now, this is the system. All the rectangles outside are contacts. The timer, calendar, is also a context. It provides temporal event. Other contacts will provide the external events. There can be business event. The external event can be business event or signal event. For each of the event, trace the flow within the system. All right. When you trace the flow, you'll be able to identify other sub-events that eventually will store the result in a data store or it will generate an output to the context. Now, the event may also be triggered when a data is being retrieved from the data store. Now we have a set of events, but they're separate events. We need to link them up. When you link them up, then you have the bigger picture of everything. Determine the order by using numbers. See, one, two, three, four, five. A part of the diagram, you may need to consider the data dictionary and many specification. Data dictionary describes the data stores and data flows data stores and data flows. Many specification will refine the functional primitives. This could be algorithms. We are done with event-based partitioning. The other two techniques that will be mentioned here are jigsaw puzzle. Jigsaw puzzle is function-centered instead of event-centered. 
So if you look at the figures, we are identifying the different business functions like update card box, create paycheck, calculate overall salary, authorized bank transfer. We identify the sink and sources for each. We also identify the data stores. And eventually, we try to figure out how these four partitions, how these four puzzles can be linked together. We can do this by identifying the interface where they overlap. You see, the cardboard and payroll can be merged together. So this is how we can link uh, uh, puzzle pieces 1 and puzzle pieces 3. And uh, we can link 3 with 2 because uh, the payroll and side payment history are basically similar. All right. And then uh, we can link 3 to 4 because um, there is a relationship between uh, these two activities whereby when a, a bank transfer is authorized, it's also uh, paying for salary. Last but not the least, the third tenet is pursuit of data. For pursuit of data, as the name suggests, is data oriented. We focus on input and output of data. We first try to find out all the data that are involved from the input and all the data that are generated in the transformation so that we can identify the processes within. So let's look at the meta outline. Identify system input data and system output data. Number two, identify intermediate data. Number three, model the flow between the data identified. And then number four, introduce connectors between the flows. And finally, identify the processes that transform the data and assign reasonable non-abstract name to the processes. Let's look at example in the figure. How do you come up with a nice cuppa of cappuccino? Do you think about the process first or do you think about the ingredients first? You may start by thinking about the ingredients first. The ingredients for making cappuccino will be coffee beans, cold milk, hot water, and cold water. The outcome, the final outcome will be cappuccino. So, how do we combine these ingredients? We first combine ground coffee beans with hot water. This will give us black coffee. As for the milk, we first get hold of a bottle of milk, fresh milk maybe, cold water that we need to steam up, and then to produce foam milk. Having black coffee and foam milk, we mix them, that will give us the cappuccino. Now notice that so far we are just talking about the ingredients and the intermediate ingredients that are transformed from the original raw ingredients. So these ingredients are analogous to data. Having identified the transformed ingredients from the raw ingredients to the eventual output, we identify the processes that, that, that transform the ingredients. For example, from coffee beans to grounded beans, the process involved will be grinding the beans. To get hot co black coffee from grounded beans, we need to add hot water, and that process will be called brewing the coffee. To get cold water into steam, we need to first heat the cold water. Then, froth the cold milk with the steam in order to get foam milk. As you can see now, we have a list of processes which we name them and this has actually become the data flow diagram but we get started with data first not with business functions not with events that's the difference of using pursuit of data finally we have come to the final slide summary recall that social oriented requirements should be agreed by all stakeholders. It shouldn't have any conflict 
and it provides internet solution. It should be complete, i.e. detailed, and uh, also documented using solution-oriented models. There are two perspectives for solution-oriented models. They are data, behavioral, and functional. Data modeling specifies the static aspects of a software, i.e. the entities, the objects, the relationships, and the attributes. Behavioral modeling is looking at states, events, and transitions between the states. Functional modeling looks at the context, the event, function, data, and their relationship. Entity relationship modeling is a popular data modeling language. Your ML state machine diagram is popular for behavior modeling. And in data flow diagram, event-based partitioning is a popular modeling language. This is all what we have for solution-oriented requirement. Um, I hope you have picked up something useful from me. Thank you very much for listening.